In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to generate numbers in sequences or random using MoGraph in very, very simple configurations and using very, very simple ways. So, for example, this clock face has numbers from 1 to 12. They're all laid out in a circular configuration. And uh, despite everything else, if I get rid of everything I don't need, you will see that we just use one cloner, let me get it out of the extrude, with just two text fields, and we can create this face. Let me show you another example. We can create a linear configuration of ascending numbers, so from 1 to 100, and then what we can do is the following. We can turn this into a grid array, and you will see that all the numbers are aligned excellent, but at the same time I can randomize them and uh, be sure that each number is represented only once in this grid and a few other tricks. So, let's begin. The main principle we are going to base this method is the MoGraph cloners blending mode. By default all cloners are set to iterate. Let me show you what that means. I'm going to use a cube and a sphere Select them both and make them children of the cloner. Select the cloner and we are going to distance them and increase the count. Zoom out and you will see that it iterates between the first and the second object. If I go and add a cone, for example, now we're going to have cone, sphere, cube, cone, sphere, cube, and so forth. Now, what happens with the blend mode, let's set it to blend mode, you won't really see anything if the objects are different. The blend mode works best when we use the same exact type of object. So I'm going to select the cube and the cone and delete them. And what I'm going to do is make a copy of my sphere and make it a sibling and make this sphere a bit larger. As you can see, the cloner in blend mode blends the parameters of the first object and of the second object. So the only parameter that's changed from this sphere to this sphere is the radius. Here it's, let's say, 50, and here it's, let's say, 300. Not 30, 300. And you can see that with each step, it grows so that it reaches the final size. Now, if I go here and change the count, you will see that the blend is going to change to accommodate for the difference between each clone. Now, there's one thing we can do with this uh, blending mode, and that is the following. If I delete these two, and select a text spline. Let me zoom in here. And I'm going to make this a clone. And then I'm going to type this number 1. Now, be careful not to add any spaces or any returns. It has to be just a number. Click outside to accept it. I'm going to make a copy of this. And in the text, let's type 10 and click outside. Watch this now. You can see that the text ascends. I'm going to go here and set this to 10 copies. And I'm going to make the second one 10 and click outside to accept it. And now, sometimes this happens because I typed in 10, I clicked outside, and then because my cursor is still here, I pressed 1 on my keyboard to navigate or to, to zoom in. And that gets recorded as a key press in our text field. So I'm going to delete it and click outside here. And now you can see that it's accepted it properly. So what we have here again, we have a text spline as a clone that says 1, nothing else. And we have another text spline that says 10. The cloner is set to blend mode. And 10 represents the steps we want to create. If I make this 11, you will see that we get these numbers. Because if we divide 10 by 11, this is what we get. So make sure that your count is always equal to the largest number. So let's go back here and make this 10. Excellent. So I'm going to do the following thing. Because I don't want to go to this one and change the text and this one and change the text, I'm going to do a nifty little trick. I'm going to select this text object and add an expresso tag. Now, if you're fearful of Espresso, don't be, because these kind of setups are very, very simple. And this is what I'm going to do. Move my text over here so I can see it all the time. 
move the Expresso Editor in the middle, and I'm going to do the following. Grab at the text object and put it here. Select it, and click and drag the word text over here. And this will create an input for the text. Then I'm going to grab the same exact object, put it here, and I'm going to go to my Object Selected, go to my Basic tab. I want to pick the name. Drag the name on the output. I want to make the name drive the text. So if I double click here and type 1 and press Enter, now that text, the text of the name of the object, gets propagated over to the input of the text. Excellent. The other thing I'm going to do is select both these things, replace the reference mode on the Expresso tag from Absolute Reference to Relative. And then all I have to do is close this and copy drag this over here. Name this 10, press Enter, and now you can see that we can feed the text just by changing the name. And it's much simpler and it requires fewer clicks. So if I go here and type 12, press Enter, you will see that this is what happens. So I'm going to leave this at 12, go to the cloner and type 12 in here as well. So now we have our 12 numbers. Lastly, I'm going to change the linear mode to radial, make the count 12, increase my radius. Let's bring this here. And because I don't want them to be in a radial configuration, I want them all to be upright, I'm going to go and turn off the alignment. Now, these are slightly off for various reasons. And just to prove that, I'm going to get a circle and I'm going to make it bigger. And you can see that they're slightly off. A couple of reasons. I need to select both my text fields, make sure that the alignment is center, so middle. And you can see now that because each text spline is calculated from its base, that's why this one looks a bit lower and this looks a bit higher. What do I need to do? First of all, let me adjust the circle using my scaling tool. You can see the circle touches the base. And the last thing I'm going to do is go to the cloner, go to the transform tab, and move all my clones by pressing my down arrow a few times. If I wanted to accelerate, I press shift to increase by 10. And you can see now that I can center my numbers on a circle. So now they're placed perfectly, and I have this wonderful circular configuration for my text. The last thing we're going to do in order to make this work properly is uh, transpose the numbers by 1, because uh, as you all know, uh, 12 is on top and 1 starts from here. So how am I going to do that? Well, you can always attempt to do it by rotating, but then all the text rotates. So I'm going to undo. Uh, it's simpler than that. Go to the cloner, go to the object, and you will see that we have a start angle and an end angle. So uh, how much do we need to transpose this? Well, that is 360 divided by 12, so that's 30, and I just copy this and I add it over here, press Enter, and there you go, 1 to 12. Of course, you can just add 30 degrees to the offset value. Now you know both ways. And this is how you make a clock face. In the next video, we're going to see some other tricks like randomizing and using other MoGraph configurations.